Blackout Comms supports several different types of devices, including the LilyGo Pager. I'm going to power it on by holding down the power button. And when I do, the it'll vibrate and the screen will come on. So, as you can see, it's very small. Uh, it fits in your pocket real well. It has this physical keyboard. It's got a scroll wheel that also clicks if you press it. And it's got three buttons along the bottom. An SD card reader. The leftmost button is the reset button. And the middle one is the power off button. So if I want to power it off, I would tap that twice. All the interactions you do with this are either with the scroll wheel, clicking the scroll wheel, or pushing keyboard buttons that correspond with either these buttons along the bottom, icons along the bottom, or the letters that go with these icons. The pager has built-in Wi-Fi, LoRa, and Bluetooth. Blackout Comms doesn't currently use Bluetooth. It's got external antennas, uh, this one for LoRa, this one for Wi-Fi. And it, they, they work pretty well even if you don't have the antennas flipped up. What they have inside is this little coil, which does pretty good. If you don't do anything with it for uh, about 30 seconds or so, it'll go to sleep like it just did there. So it's still on, it's still available for messaging and mesh functions, and it's still keeping track of its location and sharing that just the screen is turned off to, to save the battery. So all I have to do is click the scroll wheel to wake it up. This is already part of my private cluster. I've got several devices around running. And you can tell it's got a live connection by the uh, green antenna there. If there was no one around, that would be red. So the, this first screen, the home screen, lets me get to anything that I need to get to. So if I want to see who is nearby, um, that's the neighbors. So I can push N, and that's showing me all the devices that are nearby. And that, that's pretty much one page worth of them. I could scroll up and down. Uh, I can see whether I've got a live location for them, or yellow means I have a delayed location. Uh, but this also tells me their strength signal and uh, some other things. Pretty much anywhere on, from any screen, I can get back to the home screen just by clicking the scroll wheel. If I want to see my messages, I can push M. If I had a message that I hadn't read yet, there would be a red star there. So if I push M, here's my messages. The check marks mean they were confirmed delivered or confirmed received. The up arrow means that I sent it, and if it's green, it went out instantly if it's blue it went out through meshing so it could have taken a few minutes or more either one if I have a check mark it means it was confirmed delivered I'm gonna go back to the home screen if I want to send a message there's a few ways I can do that one way is to go into the contacts and choose who I want to send a message to uh, I'm gonna send it to this T deck um, which has this name uh, on here I can see the last known location, some other things. Uh, I'm just going to choose to send a message. And since I'm recording a video, I will just say video. When I'm done typing my message, I, I can do things like choose how long it should have before it expires, the uh, priority of the message, things like that. But when I'm done typing, I need to activate these buttons along the bottom. I do that by bumping the scroll wheel. So now I can see those are active. I will push send it. And it, if the other device was in range, which is typically, it can be anywhere from several miles or more to a lot less, just depending on what's in between you two. These are like few inches away so that was no problem at all so this is the device I sent it to and on this one does have a touch screen so I can uh, see the message I just sent there this is showing it confirmed it and if I look back on the pager at the messages I see that I sent video there and that it was confirmed so I know it's sitting on that device so uh, 
I will go back to the home screen here. Sometimes when you send a message, it may not go out immediately and it'll ask if you want to mesh it. Usually you just go ahead and do that. It, it will work out. It might just take a minute or two or sometimes longer. You, know, you never know if the other device is powered off or out of range or whatever, but meshing will let the delivery happen uh, even quite a bit later if, if necessary. Location, if I had a G, I don't have a live GPS signal right now, and I can tell that because this GPS icon is not green. So I can't look live at my own location, uh, otherwise I could click that. But what I can do is I can find anyone else and see what was their last known location relative to my last known location. So I know this device is also in my house, so probably its last known location, which is this device right here, and the pager will be right together. But I can choose a device and type L for location here. And yeah, you can see they're pretty much together there. Um, I can see the heading to it and the distance. So the last time this got a GPS signal, I was moving. Uh, I'm not now, but uh, if I was to go outside and get a signal, north is always up on this map, and what I can do is just start walking, and a line like that red one will pop out whichever direction I'm going. So that, if I have no idea what direction is where, that's one way I can figure it out. And if, if I'm trying to get to somebody who was, say, up here, I can just start walking till the line is facing that way, and, and it will get me there. Uh, this is the pixel map. That's one way of looking at location. There's also a QR code. So if, if you switch to the QR code, you can scan this with your phone and it'll pull up Google Maps on your phone. I can also see the time of the last known location. So this was at, on 10-7 at around noon. Okay, so I can either go back home by touching the home button or just clicking that again. The settings, um, the d settings that are the default settings are usually pretty good so you usually you, you might not want to change these I definitely don't change them unless you understand what you're doing and I try to keep all the, the settings documented on the site but uh, it does change a lot but I can scroll through the settings uh, I can choose a different category and you can see there's quite a few categories and I'm not going to go into all those but uh, I'll go back to the home screen and the last section here I haven't shown is the commands, the remote commands. Uh, Blackout comms has a lot of features that uh, are undocumented or not publicly available yet, but a lot of those revolve around these remote commands. So I can uh, do things like uh, ask how long a device has been running or ask it to tell me who, who all is in radio range. Or if I'm using the root device, I can even remotely wipe a device. And as I was on the settings screen and the command screen, this device basically was not using the radio at all, so the antenna went red there for a minute. But as soon as I go back to the home screen, it will reestablish connectivity. So if you get a message, it will vibrate, unless you disable that. If you put it in your pocket, it will stay asleep unless you tap push that scroll wheel. So just rolling that won't wake it up. Touching the keys won't wake it up. You have to bump the scroll wheel. And when I'm done and ready to turn it off, I just push that button twice and it's off. Uh, one other thing to remember, if you're charging it, it's on and you cannot turn it off. You can only turn it off if it's not charging and you tap that button twice. So that's the uh, pager.